Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the two to six player game, Dia Monsters by IDW and Pegasaurus Games. Don't worry, these monsters don't eat humans but they do eat diamonds. So go hide your diamonds, then come back, join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. Dia Monsters comes with a deck of cards made up of multiple copies of the same five Dia Monsters named Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, and Go. Each monster has a unique number value, one, two, three, four, and five, and in the bottom right corner, they provide either positive, negative, or no diamonds. Each player collects one of each type of monster to form their starting hand. The rest are shuffled into a face down pile. So in this case, we have a setup for three players. The game also comes with plastic gems that players will collect as they win games. Now I should mention, this is a pre-production copy of the game, and that means this is not the final card stock. The corners will also be rounded on the cards, and these plastic gems will be blue not green. The game is played over a series of rounds where you'll be trying to collect and place in front of you either three of the same type of monster or monsters with a total of five diamonds. But don't forget, she is a greedy monster and gobbles diamonds up, subtracting two from your total. So in this case, we don't actually have five diamonds. We have five minus two, so only three. To get five diamonds again, we might have to play another monster like this one. Now keep in mind, the monsters in your hand are not contributing to your sets. Not yet. First, you have to get them from your hand, face up in front of you, in an area known as your monster collection. Let's take a look at how we do this by showing how you play a round of the game. You start a round of play by flipping the top card of the deck face up. Each player now bids for this monster by secretly choosing and placing a monster from their hand face down on the table. I'll do this quickly for the other two players as well. Once everyone has placed their bid, all of the monsters are revealed, and the highest value wins. In this case, I played a five, and that beats out the four and the two. It's almost like I planned that. The winner then takes the card they played and the card that they bid on and places them face up in front of themselves in an area known as their monster collection. So the obvious question here is, why not always play your highest monster? Let's reset here, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why you might not. Let's pretend instead this player had chosen this monster from their hand and played it. While Ichi may have the smallest value, Ichi always beats Go, the highest value monster. So if these were the monsters played, yes, my five would beat the four, but then this one would beat the five. So this player would actually win and take both this monster and this monster and put it face up in their monster collection, which would give them a total of four diamonds, which is almost a win. Also, if more than one player plays the same monster, they cancel each other out and are not considered when comparing values. So let's pretend that, again, this player had played their two, and instead of a four, this player had chosen to play a Go as well, their highest value. These two Go monsters would cancel each other out. The players would collect them, putting them back in their hand, and now this would be the only monster remaining. And once again, this player would collect both this monster and this one, not only giving them four diamonds, but also two of the same monster. So now they'd be close to winning in both of the two different ways, either by having three of the same type of monster or having five diamonds. For this next example, I want us to pretend we have four players at the table and this is what they've bid. Now, the player who played the one might be thinking, ha, ones always beat fives, so I win. However, two fives were played, so they would first cancel each other out and go back to their respective players' hands. This leaves Ichi with a value two monster, and two is higher than one, so Ichi loses in this case as well. Also note, anytime you don't win a round, you also take the monster you played back into your hand. Now it is possible that no diamonds could be collected. For example, if this was the bid, then the two fives would cancel each other out, and so would the two twos. No one collects this monster, and it's just discarded. So once a monster has been won and collected, or discarded, 
all of the canceled or losing bids return to the player's hands, and then anyone who has less than five monsters in their hand draws back up to five. Then a new round is begun by flipping over the top card of the monster deck and placing more bids. If the draw deck ever runs out, shuffle any discarded monsters to form a new draw pile. If there's no discard pile to reshuffle at that time, then the game just ends. Otherwise, the game ends as soon as a player has in front of them five diamonds in their monster collection or three of the same type of monster. You can play the game as a single match or when a player wins, they can take a gem and then all of the players reset the match and play again. With players trying to gain a number of cubes needed to win based on the number of players. For example, in a three player game, you'd need three gems to win. So one of the challenges of the game is determining what you think other players at the table will bid for one of the face up monsters and then coming up with the perfect counter for that. And keep in mind, if I win a bit, let's say I used my Go Monster, I'm gonna to have to put this face up in my monster collection and then draw a new monster. The odds are against me that I'll draw another five. So the players now have some imperfect information about what I might have in my hand that they can use as they plan out their next bids. And that's how you play the game. Now, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. And consider subscribing to our channel because in a future episode, we're gonna do an actual playthrough of Dia Monsters. You can see how this all comes together to create the gaming experience. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.